so what are the sort of typical conservation concerns then? <coughs> Not got any. Come on, oh, really obvious things. Habitat. habitat loss. <laughs> Anything else? Is it just habitat loss? Pollution. Pollution, very good. Any more? <coughs> Hunting. Hunting, yeah, climate change. So invasive, oh, bringing other species in, that's very good. How many other ones have I got? You've pretty much got most of them. There's some <coughs> animal conflict that I've got in there. So let me just top of my head stuff that I wrote this afternoon. There are loads of these things. Conservation is a complicated business. And there are, it's, it involves all of us, and it involves our environment. <coughs> Who here thinks we're destroying the planet? Okay. I don't. <coughs> the planet has been around for now 4.3 billion years. It's very robust. What we are doing is changing, undoubtedly changing the environment. And animals and life on this planet will exist. It will find a way. It will be different after we've gone. But what we're doing is we're making it uncomfortable for ourselves. I'm very human centric. I think that the reason to get involved in conservation, all of these things, is about people, for me. And we're, I'm a very speciesist, extremely speciesist. I prefer dogs to fleas, massively, okay? And I, I'm sure some of you will as well. Um, and we all are speciesist, we all have, we like ones that look like us. That's why we like baby orangutans. The big problem for conservation is ugly animals. Okay, that's the ones that really struggle. And, you know, <coughs> parasites are ones that we come into direct conflict with. But all of these things affect people primarily. We can't destroy this planet. Even with all of our, if we got all of our nuclear weapons and try to physically destroy the planet, we might make it uninhabitable for us, but life would go on. And it would, some other species, look at the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs were around for how long? 20 minutes. 150 million years. 150 million <coughs> years. That's a ridiculous length of time. Humans in their current form have only been around for about 250,000 years, and yet dinosaurs in one form or another walk in the planet for 150 million years, and now there's none of them, except for all the birds, which are dinosaurs. So there are animals that, you know, when we talk about, you know, all of these conservation concerns, it doesn't just affect us, it does affect those different species. We are obviously in a mass extinction period at the moment. Um, and there are some animals that, um, unfortunately, that people have, have got sort of very negative attitudes towards, like this one. Because that's what a lot of conservation is about, is about communication. So who here wants to work in some way to do with wildlife or conservation? Mm. A lot of you. Who wants, who wants to <coughs> just do hands-on with wildlife? Okay. Very few of you compared to the number of them. So the ones of you that want to work in conservation, most of you will end up doing communication. Effectively doing what I do for a living, which is standing up and trying to convince people that maggots are brilliant. And this sort of thing. And it's sometimes a hard sell. And I'm afraid, you know, that, as I said before, conservation is not as straightforward as a lot of people think. There are all these sorts of conflicts, and people will accuse you of all sorts of different things. About perpetuating sort of um, myths and propaganda. You know, you either compromise too much or you don't compromise enough. You're oversimplistic about your view. You know, look at the sort of uh, the, what's happened to the economy over in the UK at the moment. They're now talking about scrapping a lot of the green taxes because they, we can't afford it at the moment. And yet the green lobby and the environmentalists who've just been clawing away at, you know, at the government and awareness and trying to get to a level of understanding that we really need to be doing more, that's going to be, as soon as we get into a, a three or four year dip in the economy, bang, that's all knocked in uh, for six again. Looking at the bigger picture, trying to get people to understand that, that we have to think in generational terms as opposed to purely in the next three or four years. Humans have not evolved to think in generational terms. 
Our brains, we think we're rational beings, we're not. We're completely, completely emotional. When it comes to making decisions, we're just like any other animal. It's just a wash of chemicals in there. We think we're rational, but we're not. We're, you know, you can do all sorts of studies on people and show that they make the wrong decision rationally uh, because they feel in a certain way. Um, and we only have this capacity to think of the next couple of years because that's, that's how we've evolved. Um, so we have to have science, and that's what science does for us. It gets us away from irrational thought. Science is saying, is this true? And that's why we have to look at the science. It has to be sometimes cold and emotional, and you have to make sacrifices and things like that. The final one is outside interference there. Really, that's talking about when you talk about whatever social group you're talking about, whether that's me going over to Indonesia and talking to them about orangutans, and then saying, who are you to come over here and tell us about our wildlife? Where are your bears and wolves? You've killed those. Whether that is somebody from the city going out into the countryside and saying to somebody, you know, you'd stop cutting your hands <coughs> and this sort of thing. It depends on, obviously, which group that you belong to and how you can integrate yourself into those, uh, into those groups. When I was talking earlier to some of the staff here about veterinary students, whatever, whatever field that you're going to work with, if you think you're going to work with animals, the most common animal you're going to come into contact with is another human being. Everything, that all of you that want to work in the animal sphere, you are, all of those animals out there that you want to work with have somebody attached to them that you have to engage with and you have to emotionally get to care about what, what you care about. Take the jungle, take deforestation, area the size of whales, tennis courts every second, all those sorts of things. We're told that. You all know those stats. Who cares, really? We know what the threat is. The big threat to most of the environments around the world is habitat destruction. This is uh, Indonesia, um, uh, in, in Borneo, um, and this is where we went to film orangutans. And this is where orangutans used to live. They do still live in these forests over here, but they're diminishing every time we go back. Uh, and you go there and you see it's just an absolute desert. 